Pastor Carol, we welcome you um, back to Enfield and uh, Edmonton um, uh, churches. And um, uh, we look forward to hearing from you in a few moments. Amen. But, so glad to be here, Brother Manley. Thank you so much. Yes, we, we're enjoying you. We thank you for that message yesterday. A very powerful message about oh, God um, the glory. Amen. Our, and we can find refuge in him. There's always a place of refuge. So thank you for that. Um, this afternoon, we want to get to know a little bit more about you. And so we're going to ask you a few more questions um, uh, this afternoon. Um, you introduced us to your beautiful wife yesterday and um, uh, she sang for us. Um, but I believe that you also have a, a, a young son called Malachi and a daughter, uh, Makila. And, um, and Malia. Uh, sorry? Malachi and Malia. Melia, yes. Okay, Malachi and Melia. And um, as a family, um, we know what you enjoy doing on your own, but what do you enjoy doing as, as a family together? Oh, Brother Manley, uh, we, we enjoy, we, we really enjoy traveling. We, oh man, we love traveling. We love the outdoors. We love packing our bags, hopping on a plane, going somewhere far, somewhere ex exquisite. Amen. Uh, the last uh, place that we went was uh, uh, in Ghana. And oh, my goodness, what a trip that was. So, uh, you know, the Carol's family, we, we, we love to travel. We love the outdoors. As a matter of fact, today is a, a holiday here in the um, United States and everyone is off. And we just got home from an ATV tour in the bushes. We traveled over 300 acres on four wheel drives and we were just out in the great outdoors. We saw the, the wildlife. It, it was a little chilly, but that's all right. It was just so much fun being outside with the family. This is what we do on any average uh, uh, holiday we can be found riding our bikes, doing something outside. And, you know, if the Lord blesses with the finances, amen, we would be on a plane somewhere, uh, somewhere nice, just, you know, just us enjoying each other. London could be quite nice at some time. So, you know, when, you, when you're when you thinking about this, remember um, us here on your journey. <laughs> or if you Absolutely. go to the Far East, you can actually have a stop in London and then go back home. <laughs> oh, yes, we did that. On our way to, to, to Ghana, we actually stopped over in London for a few days, visited some friends and family. It was just, it was just an amazing experience. It would be great to meet you personally. Can't wait. Can't wait. Okay. Um, Jamaicans are known for their um, unique cuisine. And um, I just want to know, what was your favorite dish? Oh, Brother Manley, Brother Manley, you're putting me on, a spot, on the spot here. Um, first, let me, let me look over to uh, uh, YouTube here. There are 18 people, 18 connected devices on YouTube. I just want to wonder, is this a safe space? Can I just speak the truth and shame the devil? <laughs> hey, man, man, well. Uh, don't, don't worry, it's no, nothing unclean. Amen, amen. But I, I, I love, I love uh, stew peas and rice. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, if I, if I can just be honest, you know, I'm not talking about the 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 idol or the veggie stew peas. Sometimes I like a little oxtail in it. Amen, Ooh. amen. But but pray for me, Kingdom family. Uh, I'm, I'm heading to the vegetarian lifestyle. Praise the Lord. But until I gain the victory, I, I must speak the truth and shame the devil. I love my stew peas and rice with a little oxtail. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, wonderful dish. I cook it very well. If anyone is on this side of the Atlantic, please, by all means, come on over. I'll be happy to cook that for you. Praise the Lord. But that is by far my favorite, favorite favorite dish amen somebody say clean food it's clean amen <laughs> i suppose that's white rice as well isn't it yes sir yeah oh brother manly you know it you know it it is white rice praise the lord but pray for me in jesus name okay the last question could you share with us what your greatest fear is hmm. uh my greatest fear uh, i would say apart from missing out on salvation Apart from missing out on, uh, on salvation, I, I don't like turbulence. And I, I, I guess you all picked up on that from some of the illustrations that I shared. I just don't like, I love to fly. I love to travel. Oh, yes, Sister C Carrie, 
Uh, I don't like creepy, crawly, slimy insects. Not <laughs> too. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. But um, you know, uh, that's along with with turbulence. It's you know, uh, it's one of my biggest fears. I, I do a little aviation myself. I take flying lessons. But when I'm not in control, it's 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 one of my my greatest fears. You know, so I always go down in sackcloth and ashes before I know I have to fly. But, you know, my faith, you know, the Bible says a just shall live by faith. My faith, God has allowed my faith to surpass my fear. And I'm doing much better in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing those personal things about yourself. Um, it helps us to know who the speaker is. And, Amen. Um, Amen. Before we give you the pulpit and ask you to speak to us, we're going to be um, blessed with a, a musical item by Sophie at this time. And Amen. straight after that, we'll be listening for your words of wisdom this evening.
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sister Sophia, we just want to acknowledge you tonight. Thank you so much for your musical uh, rendition tonight. Uh, we have been blessed uh, evening after evening as you sing to the Lord. You usher us into the very presence of God on the wings of song. And we just want to say thank you to God. Be the glory. Great things he hath done. Let me say good evening again, Kingdom family. Good evening to one Good evening to all. What a pleasure it is to be in the house of the Lord. Will you say amen? I want you to know, kingdom family, that right where you are, you could be in your bedroom, your living room, wherever you are, uh, right now is holy ground. That place has been transformed into holy ground. And I want you to give God praise. We thank you for joining us one more uh, evening for the pathway to peace peace evangelistic series we thank you for being here we pray that you have been blessed you and yours uh through the uh presentations so far we pray that at the end of this revival at the end of this series you would have been blessed more than you could have ever asked or imagined we're going to claim that in the name of jesus i want to salute i want to recognize and affirm the man of god uh who god has called as such a time like this to lead uh, this mighty army of believers, Pastor Des. Pastor Des, we salute you, Doc. We just want to thank you and recognize you for the hard work that you are doing in this branch of Zion. May God continue to bless you and your family in Jesus' name. To all the officers and the members of the Enfield and the Edmonton 70th Adventist churches, we just want to thank you. I just want to thank you uh, for your grace and your hospitality so far. To all the viewers on Online on YouTube right now. There are over 19 connected device, devices uh, uh, to uh, uh, Edmonton's YouTube channel. We welcome you. We welcome you. I say, come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. I invite everyone. I already just click the subscribe button. And I want all our viewers, if you have not yet subscribed to the Edmonton's uh, YouTube uh, channel, we ask you to go ahead and do so. Subscribe, like this video. If this service, if the nightly services has been a blessing to you and your family, we ask you to go ahead and first hit the like button. And if you have not already done so, we ask you to subscribe. We want the number of subscribers to climb astronomically amen so subscribe and while you do that there's a little bell to the right of the subscribe button go ahead and hit that notification bell so whenever edmonton goes live you will be notified that something powerful and something good is about to happen so go ahead and hit that like button and let the world know that those who are blessed are much more than those who are cursed in jesus name let the church of the living god say amen and amen let us get straight to the word of God. Tonight's subject is hell's two unanswered prayers. Hell's two unanswered prayers. And while you're getting your Bibles queued up, I have a, a favor to ask of those who are with me here on the Zoom platform. I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm all by myself. Amen. So I'm going to invite you, please. I want to see some beautiful faces. I see Sister Merle. Sister Merle has her. She's looking so good. Praise the Lord, Sister Merle. I thank you for being here in God's corner. Praise the Lord. I see Brother Malcolm and I, of course, Brother Manley's there or Pastor is there. But I want Want some people to, to activate your cameras. I want to see your beautiful faces. Uh, there you go. There you go. More individuals are coming on. God bless you, sis. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for your nightly quizzes. Amen. But come on in. It doesn't matter if you didn't brush your teeth all afternoon. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your face is not washed. We're all a part of the family of God. Amen. If I didn't go on that ATV ride earlier, I, I, didn't, I don't even know if I would have showered right now. I mean, I did shower already, but uh, praise the Lord. But please, it's okay. We're all part of the family of God. You're not being seen live on the YouTube. And so I want to see you. It doesn't matter. As long as you are dressed and you are decent. Amen. Just come on in so I can see your face, so I can feel as if I have an army of believers surrounding me. The cameras are coming on. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Hell's two unanswered prayers. 
the text is Luke chapter 16, uh, verses 19 through 31. We're going to spend some time in our Bible reading uh, tonight. Luke chapter 16, uh, verses 19 through 31. Uh, let us read. The Bible says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple. He was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, my God, who was laid at his gate. He was there desiring to be fed with the crumbs, or oh, help him, Holy Spirit, which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torment in Hades or hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, fa Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in wa water and cool my my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and li likewise Lazarus evil things, and now he is comforted, and you are, are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can nor can can those from there pass to us? Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. To my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses, they have the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, not so. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, if thou, uh, if they do not hear Moses, if they do not hear the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Our subject tonight, again, is hell's two unanswered prayers. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you, Father, for another privilege to connect with my kingdom family members to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, Father, I pray that as we study this passage, as we uh, glean all those principles, all those lessons that you have for us tonight, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will be felt as we worship together, as we touch and agree through this medium. I pray for Father, that someone will be motivated, someone will be moved from where to they from where they are to the place where God wants them to be. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that when a call is made, individuals will respond in, in, in a positive way. They will sign up, they will register their decision to go with Jesus all the way. Father, I ask you tonight to give me the power, the clarity of mind, the power in my voice and, and, and in the words that I may communicate your people to your people. I pray now, Lord, that uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let the church of the living God say amen. Oh, tonight, Kingdom family, uh, the, there's a challenge that we all face. It, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be male, female, uh, rich, poor, uh, young or old. We all face a challenge tonight. And, and that challenge is how do I allow the not yet to influence the what is? How do I allow the not yet to influence the what is? Uh, let, me, let me come a little closer. Let me come a little closer. Um, uh, a few months ago, last year, actually, before 
the pandemic, we were on a JetBlue flight, flight 2879 from New York to Montego Bay, Jamaica. We were on that flight to head to Jamaica to bury my uncle. Uh, my uncle died, let me tell you, last year, uh, toward the end of 2018 into 2019. It was a hectic time for my family. My mother died in November. My dad died in January. My uncle died right after. It was just one after the other. And prior to that, my father-in-law died. So father-in-law died October, mom, November, dad, January, uncle right after. It was just a tumultuous time for my family. And uh, so we were on that flight heading to Jamaica to bury my uncle and, and just to enjoy a few days of vacation with the family. Uh, beloved, I'm, I'm always happy to head home no matter what the occasion is. And while we were on that flight, we were at our cruising altitude and uh, um, I was at the window seat. Uh, my, my daughter Melia was in the B seat and my uh, son Malachi, he had the aisle seat. And during the meal service, hear me out now, Kingdom family, hear me out. During the meal service, the flight attendant uh, accidentally spilled juice on my son Malachi, who was seated in the aisle seat. Beloved, she was so embarrassed. She was so apologetic. She was so sorry. Uh, uh, but what I did, I, I turned it into a light matter. I, I, I diffused the situation and we turned it into a light, light matter. We smiled, we made her com comfortable. We turned it into a light matter because the truth is kingdom family life has taught me not to sweat the small stuff. So I turned it into a light matter. So I smiled and I looked at her and I said, it's okay. It's no problem problem at all. I, I said, this is nothing. After all, we're heading to Jamaica. Jamaica, no problem. Come on, somebody. So we all laughed. We all laughed and we had a good time. But when I thought about that experience, I realized that some people would have gotten very angry. Some people would have gotten uptight. They would have said, how could you be so careless? How could you be so clumsy? What if it was coffee? Are you going to do my dry cleaning? This is my favorite outfit, but praise the Lord. We turned it into a light matter. Listen to me, saints of God. When you are heading to a good place, you don't have time to be angry. You don't have time to be disagreeable. You don't have time to be combative. You don't have time to be in conflict. So we all laughed and, and then she left. She left us, but moments later, listen to the preacher tonight. Moments later, she came back with a menu and she said anything you want on the menu it's free amen somebody she said anything you want on the menu it's free saints you want to know what i learned from that jet jet blue flight 2879 experience that flight to montego bay let me share with you number one i learned that a good attitude can activate divine favor amen a good attitude can activate divine favor secondly i learned that when you are heading to a good place when you're on your way to paradise your anticipation should alleviate anger Mm -hmm. Your anticipation should alleviate anger and rest should remove that spirit of retaliation. You see, the joy of the not yet should conquer the pain of now. But the problem is that many of us, we have lost the joy of our salvation. Can I give you something to shout about this evening by reminding you that the righteous, we are, we are heading to a good place? We are heading to a beautiful place. That's why the Bible says, fear not little children, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, fear not, for the book of Daniel additionally teaches us that judgment is in favor of the saints, but in disfavor of the little horn. So fear not, kingdom family. The Bible lets us know that he's not willing that any should perish 
perish, fear not because hellfire was not prepared, prepared for you, but it was prepared for Satan and his angels. Somebody ought to give God praise. That is a reason for you to shout tonight. That's why the Bible says, fear not. But ever since the beginning of time, Satan has always been on a campaign to misrepresent the character of Jesus Christ. And he would like you to believe tonight that God is this mystical, frightful, cosmic killjoy, just itching, just waiting to execute judgment on anyone who cracks even a smile. But that is not who God is. Amen? Is that who God is? God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. He is a God of second chances. He's a God who suffers long. He's a God whose good pleasure is to give you the kingdom. Somebody ought to say amen in the presence of the Lord. But there are two things that God will not do. Sister Del Rose, are you hearing me tonight? There are two things that God will not do. Number one, God, he will not interfere with your divine democratic right to choose your own course. He will not. Number two, Sister Donna, he will not interfere with the law of natural consequences. So if you remain disobedient, you will experience the consequence of your action. As a result, God cannot stop you if you choose Satan over Jesus. God will not stop you if you choose darkness over light. Gucci, are you hearing me tonight? God will not stop you if you choose death over life hell over heaven so he says to us in philippians chapter 2 verse 12 therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence the bible says work out your own salvation in what in fear and trembling oh beloved friends god is faithful enough to show us the way and give us the power to finish the race, but it is left to us, Tiana, to work it out in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, for whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a loud voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, somebody, walk in it, this is the way, walk in it. The Bible goes on to say, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then what? We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So I'm here tonight as God's ambassador. I'm here tonight as God's emissary. I'm here tonight to say to someone, that there are two ways before every man and woman, every boy and girl. And Jesus uses these two metaphors to describe life's destiny. Number one, there is the broad way. And number two, there is the narrow way. And I want to remind somebody tonight that the road to hell is broad. It is broad because many people are on it in 2020. The Bible says, enter through the narrow gate for wide, wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many, not a few, many enter through it. 7.7 .7 billion people on earth. Listen to the preacher, 7.7 .7 billion people on earth and most of them tonight, Pastor Des. Most of them, sadly, tonight are on Broadway. That Broadway is so crowded that there is a tra traffic jam on Broadway. Are you listening to me tonight? I don't know about you, but there are two things that I hate. I hate being in traffic, 
Anyone knows what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. I hate being in traffic. And number two, I hate having regrets. Do I have a witness in the presence of the Lord? Uh, the other day, the other day, I was uh, using the navigation system, Waze. I'm not sure if you have Waze in the UK, but I was, yes, I believe you do. I was using Waze and uh, I learned a lesson. I learned to trust ways, even when my mind tells me to do something different. So ways was giving me directions and ways told me to get off the highway. But I looked straight ahead on the highway and the highway looked clear to me. But ways was telling me get off the highway because there's traffic ahead. But I said, no, the road ahead looks clear to me. So I stayed on the highway and disregarded ways. But brothers and sisters, when I got around the corner, I was greeted by a sea of red lights. I was stuck in traffic for nearly two hours on my way to the conference office. And it was then that I regretted not listening to the GPS. I was having regrets because I did not listen to the GPS. And tonight I want to say that if we end up in hell, listen to the preacher. If we end up in hell, we will have regrets, but it will be too late. Who am I preaching to tonight? As we go to the story found in Luke chapter 16, we find a very interesting parable. It comes as the last of a series of parables found in Luke chapter 13 and onwards. We see the parable of the mustard seed, the power, the parable rather of leaven. We, we saw the parable of the salt with no savor in Luke chapter 14. In Luke 15, we saw the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the prodigal son, the parable of the unjust steward. Some, however, and I know some of you Adventists were a bit nervous as we read the passage because apparently it is filled with inconsistencies where certain doctrines are concerned. Some believe, do not believe that this is a parable and have come to take the places and events outlined in the story as being real. But a forensic examination of the word of God in its entirety reveals that this is indeed a parable. I'm taking my time here to help someone doctrinally. It's a parable. How do I know it's a parable? Number one, Abraham's bosom. And uh, somebody ought to be taking notes here because a lot of uh, Christians have gotten in trouble because of this same passage. But listen to me now. Number one, Abraham's bosom was nothing more than Jewish symbolism. Why? Because Abraham was honored and Abraham was revered. It's symbolism. And to the Jewish audience that Jesus had, they understood what Abraham's bosom meant. It was a place of Honor. It's all symbolism. It's not real. Number two, to show and to highlight that it's a parable. Number two, the Bible teaches us that the dead can talk. Amen. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 5, 6, and verse 10, the Bible says the living know that they shall die, but the dead knows what? The, the dead knows nothing. And number three, to prove that this is not a parable, hell is not burning now. It's not. We can use the Bible to prove that there's no hell burning now. And we can also use common sense. Amen. If you look at 2 Peter 2 verse 9, we, we, we see hell is not burning now. And secondly, technology has reached to a point right now where satellites in the sky can map every acre of planet earth. And I promise you, apart from the wildfires in Australia and uh, uh, California, there's nowhere else 
that's burning. There's no hellfire burning anywhere on planet Earth. Am I speaking truth in the presence of the Lord? So it's a parable. And in the parable, Jesus says that there was a rich man, a certain rich man, who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day. Oh, King, kingdom family, Sister Emily, he was just living his best life. It was flamboyant. He was living his best life. Every day, this rich man, his social media posts carried the hashtag, Y-O-L-O, -O, you only live once. He was living his best life. He wore the best clothes. His parties were lit. Clearly, he was a very, very rich man. The Bible goes on to say that a certain beggar named Lazarus, and this is interesting, don't miss it. This is interesting because this is the first parable where someone was given a name. Mm -hmm. He was laid at his gate, the Bible says, who desired to be fed with the leftovers from the man's table. My God, desired to be fed with the scraps. All he wanted was what the rich man did not want anymore. The scraps of food we throw away so often, the doggy bag, that's all he wanted, the doggy bag, if you please. The man was not only in abject poverty, but he was also very sick. Oh, beloved friends, right now, healthcare is on the ballot. We have an election coming up in November, uh, November chapter, <laughs> November 3rd, we, and, and health care is on the ballot. It's one thing to be poor, kingdom family, but it's another thing to be poor and sick. The Bible tells us that he was laid, which tells us that he was non-ambulatory. He had issues connected to his mobility. The Bible says he was laid. Somebody had to bring him there to exacerbate his situation and to make his condition a million times worse. We also discovered in the parable that he was covered with sores that were undoubtedly infected. The Bible says dogs, my God which tells us that he was such in a bad state. He was in so much of a bad state that he couldn't even fend off the dogs from coming to lick his sores. This man was poor. And, and, and even while I read this passage right now, beloved, I'm getting a little emotional because I have a soft spot in my heart for people who are poor and destitute. And in Connecticut, where I live, I see it all around me, people who are poor and destitute. When I go to New York, where the church that I serve is, is located in, uh, New York is one of the richest cities in the world. And on one street, we have the very, very rich. But on the other side of the street, we have the very, very poor. It's a terrible situation. He was poor in finances, poor in nutrition, poor in health. And the Bible says he was laid at the rich man's gate. It was at his gate which meant that on going out, the rich man would have seen him and in coming in, he would have seen him again. But still he was allowed to remain in the condition he was in. Family, let me add a little context. There were no hospitals. There wasn't a hospice, no homes, no shelters for people like Lazarus in those days. And it was left to the generosity of people with means, people who were rich, to care for the sick and needy. But the rich man remained selfishly indifferent to the needs of his suffering brother. Perhaps he subscribed to the notion, Brother Manley, to the belief that as a Pharisee, he was entitled to wealth. And poverty was a curse from God. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody tonight. The messenger of the Lord tells us in Christ's Object uh, Lessons, page 262, that in proportion, and I'm about to help somebody right now, in proportion to his abundance, don't miss it, was his obligation to use his gifts for the uplifting of humanity. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I, I'm helping somebody right now. Page 6262, Christ's Object Lessons. 
in proportion to his abundance was his obligation to use his gifts for the uplifting of humanity. So that means, uh, 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 Brother Malcolm, Brother Manley, uh, uh, Sister Emmeline, what this means is that if the Lord has blessed you with wealth, with a little resources, it is your obligation to help those who are in need in proportion to how God has blessed you. Appreciate with me that God doesn't have a problem with wealth. I'll take this a step further by letting you know that God is not anti-wealth. He is pro-wealth. That's why the Bible says he wants you to prosper. The Bible says he wants you, you, Sister Margaret, to be the head and not the tail. He wants you to be in a position to make loans, not to take out loans. The lender, not the borrower. So the problem is not wealth. The problem is when we live under the twin curse of pride and selfishness. For it's not about what you have, kingdom family. It's about who gave it to you. Will you say amen? Oh, my father is rich. Let me see the hands of all those tonight who believe that your father is rich. Hallelujah. My father is rich. And I believe tonight that the rich, and this is what God gave to me, the rich are just a repository for the resources of God to be used in the redemption of desperate people. That's my definition for those who are rich. The rich are just a repository for the resources of God to be used in the redemption of desperate people. That means you are a repository. You didn't get what you have through earthly wisdom. You are a repository. God chose you as a repository. The owner of the cattle on a thousand hills blesses you so that you can be a blessing to others. Will you say amen? Oh, beloved, as we get ready to close, uh, as was expected, as was expected, the day came when the poor man died. The poor ma man died. C can I pull over real quick right here? Uh, I, I must say this, family. It takes Christian maturity to sometimes see death as deliverance. Mm -hmm. it, it takes Christian maturity to see death as deliverance. It takes Christian maturity to see death as being an escape from the tribulations of this world. The Bible says precious in the sight of the Lord, come on somebody, is, is the death of his saints. So the Bible says Lazarus died. He, he died in the parable. He died in the story. He died in the allegory. And, and, and Jesus articulates that this beggar was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Now, if you're just, if you're watching the rebroadcast and you, you just tuned in right at this stage, to ensure that you remain or we remain doctrinally correct, we, we ask you to go back to the beginning of the sermon where I explain, where I explain what is meant by Abraham's bosom. Amen. Hit the rewind button. Ah, amen. The Bible says the beggar was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Now understand again that Jesus was not presenting some new doctrine on the state of the dead, but what Jesus was doing was using the prevailing worldview on death to teach a more important principle. And the lesson here, family, is that not every theological error has to be corrected in the here and now. Not every theological error has to be connected now. Priority should be ascribed to those creeds, those doctrines that are salvifically crucial. I'm trying to help somebody the way how God helped me. What am I trying to say? 
I'm trying to say, family, stop tripping over those minor theological disagreements, those minor theological issues that are not necessary for salvation. Stop fighting over, over them. Stop arguing over them. We're, we're seeing here that what Jesus was doing was that Jesus was meeting people on their own ground, realizing that they are babies in the faith. They're babies. So the poor man died. But the Bible says the rich man died as well. In spite of his wealth, he died. In spite of his resources, he died. In spite of his assets, he died. In spite of his big bank account, his big, big health savings account, he died. And I want to pause right here and remind somebody that there is one destination for the rich. There's one destination for the poor, the bond, the free, male and female, and that is the grave. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the fact that you eat organic. It doesn't matter whether or not you decide to exercise or eat right. There's one destination that we all have, and that is the grave. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be Bible-wielding, veggie-eating, child of God. We all have an expiration date. The Bible says that he died. But of the rich man, Jesus says the rich man died and was buried. Don't miss it. Of the poor man, all that was said of him was that he died. But of the rich man, Jesus says, he died and was buried. Can, 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 can you imagine their funerals? The rich man had put, paid mourners, costly spices, an elaborate tomb. But the poor man received the funeral of the unknown. Oh, my God. Bible says both died. Lazarus died and went to Abraham's bosom, according to the story. But the rich man died and he was tormented in hell. While, 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 while there, the rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And it is here that he offered up his first prayer in hell. His first prayer was offered up in hell. Verse 24, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send me Lazarus. Don't miss it. The same poor man who was laid at this gate. He said, send me Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. But the Bible lets us know that his prayer was not answered. Jesus said, remember that in your life you receive good things while Lazarus received evil things. Now Lazarus is comforted and you are tormented. Plus, Lazarus cannot come to you because there is a great gulf fixed and there is no passing over in either direction. Beloved, the rich man wanted relief, but it was too late. And you must understand, kingdom family, that there is no relief after your probation is closed. There is no relief after you have crossed that line with God. And it must be understood tonight that it is impossible to secure salvation after death. All we have is the here and now. There is no, listen to me, young people, there is no second probation. We only have one chance at salvation. Oh, beloved, Jesus wanted to emphasize the importance of individual accountability. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 14, verse 12, teach us then each of us, so then rather each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Your mother cannot save you. Your father cannot save you. Your pastor cannot save you, but each of us individually must give an account to God. 
The other point Jesus wanted to illustrate here is that after death, it is too late. Are you hearing me, somebody? After death, it is too late. The Bible says in an acceptable time, I've heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Don't put off your repentance tonight. Here comes the second prayer found in verse, verses 27 and 28. He reloaded, the, the rich man reloaded and he came back again. He said, I beg you therefore, Father, if Lazarus cannot come to me, send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers <clears throat> so he can testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment. Notice family, that a rich man is concerned about the salvation of his family. But as with his first prayer, his second prayer was not answered. Jesus said to him, after Abraham gave his reply, Abraham said, they have Moses, they have the prophets, let them hear them. To this, a rich man replied, no, Father Abraham, they will certainly listen if one goes to them from the dead. But Abraham replied, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, talking about the word, word of God, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the grave. Again, Jesus wanted to emphasize that the law and the prophets are God's appointed agencies for the salvation of men. In other words, kingdom family, the scriptures are enough to save. Will you say amen? The scriptures are enough to save. The word of God is enough to save. From Genesis to Revelation, it is enough to save. That's why the Bible says all scripture, not some of the scriptures, all scripture, not just the New Testament, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profit profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in, in, in righteousness. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse eight, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 119, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. But family, we missed something. We missed something in the passage. The Bible says, the parable says, begins rather by saying, a certain rich man. Then the record continues by saying, a certain beggar named Lazarus. I think you missed it. The parable be begins by saying a certain rich man. Then he continues by saying a certain beggar named Lazarus. I believe somebody caught on to it. But if you didn't, let me assist you. This is the first parable where an actual name can be found. Can I tell you that this is how it will be in the Lamb's Book of Life? I'm done, family. I'm done. I'm wrapping up right now. Can I tell you that this is how it's going to be in the Lamb's book of life? Oh, if you are lost, your name will not be found. Amen. If you're lost tonight, your name will not be found in the Lamb's book of life. No, no, no matter how many times you petition, the answer will remain the same. After a diligent search of the archives, no record can be found. Oh my God, no record can be found. But on the other hand, rejoice with me tonight. But if you are saved, like Lazarus in the parable, if you are saved, 
your name will be found written there. Somebody ought to kick out an amen for the joy of our salvation. If you want your name to be found there, I want you to type amen and give God some praise and give God honor tonight, knowing that he does not want any one of us to, be, to perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. Will you shout amen? Oh, let me close by telling you, that they, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Let me wrap up tonight by telling you Luke chapter 6 verse 20. Blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew adds to this by saying blessed are the poor in spirit. But tonight, let's stay with Luke. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I want the kingdom tonight. I want the kingdom tonight. If you want the kingdom tonight, just type kingdom right where you are. Just type in the chat, I want the kingdom, or hashtag kingdom. I want the kingdom tonight. The Bible says, blessed, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom. And remember what I shared with you earlier, that passage. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I can't wait to become a citizen, a citizen in the commonwealth of heaven. I can't wait to see you there. I can't wait to have you as my neighbor. Will you say amen? Let me close tonight by making a very solemn appeal. I beg you, kingdom family, those on YouTube, those on Zoom, Micah, Nerissa, Norma, Novlet, Ricardo, Simon, Sylvia, I beg you all tonight in the name of Jesus, Sister Dibby, Sister Jennifer, I beg you all tonight in the name of Jesus, don't be a victim of friendly fire. What are you talking about, preacher? Don't be a victim of friendly fire. Let, let, let me explain. The Bible says, hellfire was prepared for, for, for Satan and his angels. So uh, it was not prepared for you. It was not. Hellfire was not prepared for you. You know, in, um, in law enforcement, if there is a shootout and uh, say a police officer accidentally shoots one of his colleagues, uh, the news reports will carry the news story that the, the police who, who was injured or God forbid the police officer who passed away, he was a victim of friendly fire. The same is true in the, the, the spiritual context. Hellfire was not prepared for you. It was not prepared for me. When, 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 when God uh, 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 created that, that, that uh, form of judgment, no more water, but fire next time, it, it was not prepared with, with, with the Johnson's family in mind, with Josephine in mind. It was not prepared with Kelly in mind, Karen in mind, Leander or Louise. Uh, hellfire was prepared for, for Satan and his angels. So tonight, this, this, is, this is how I'm going to end tonight. And then we go home and we sleep. Not go home. We're all home. Amen. But we go to bed and we sleep. This is all I want you to get tonight. Don't be a victim of friendly fire. Hellfire is real. Judgment is real. Don't just have this myopic focus on salvation and on grace. There's also a judgment. I say to my church all the time, God's grace forgives, but God's government must allow sinners to reap what they sow. That, that, that's, that's a good, powerful word. That's a good, powerful word. God's grace forgives, but God's government must allow sinners to reap what they sow. Sometimes we become so focused on God's grace that we neglect God's government. 
God's government that will one day execute divine judgment on sin and Satan. Please, I'm begging you, kingdom family, I'm begging you with all my heart tonight, do not be a victim of friendly fire. It was not meant for you. It was not meant for me. Do not be a victim of friendly fire. You need to be covered tonight. You need to be covered so that you will not fall a victim to friendly fire. You, you, you need that breastplate. You need a helmet. You, you need protection. You need protection. And the protection comes when your life is surrendered to Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's the only protection you have. Uh, there is no second probation. All you have tonight is your lifetime. Don't become a cynic. Don't you ever say, um, you know, don't scoff and say, Jesus hasn't come all this time. We have time. No, you don't have time. You don't. All you have is your lifetime. All you have, if you live for 10 years, that's all you had. If you live for 20 years, that's all you had. I just celebrated a birthday. I'm now 42 to God be the glory. Great things he had done. If I die right now, all I had was 42 years. And to me, to me, it took 42 years for Jesus to come. To me. Hear me out before you throw me out. The Bible says the living know that they shall die, but the dead knows nothing. So when you die, time stops. You are no longer conscious of time. So if I go down at age 42, in an instant, in a blinking of an eye, I will see Jesus come. Because while I'm in the grave, I could have been in the grave for two years or two centuries. To me, because I'm unconscious of time, to me, it seems as if Jesus comes after 42 years. So stop looking at, at the second coming. Stop viewing eschatology, the doctrine of last day events through, through, through the lens of what takes place globally or what takes place historically. Look at it from uh, a personal perspective. Jesus will come in your lifetime as long as you live. So brethren, all we have is now, man. All we have is now. Can we just get real? Let's not put off. And that's what this parable teaches. Hell's two unanswered prayer, prayers. There is no second chances after we die. Young people, hear me out. This is not a part of the script, but I must say it. We have one life to live. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. It is possible tonight. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. It is possible tonight that somebody may say goodnight to their family and not wake up to see tomorrow. So all you have is now. And I'm petitioning somebody. I'm, I'm just praying that somebody on YouTube, somebody online tonight will, will just be ready uh, to just make a decision for Jesus Christ. We have some e-decision cards. I, I wonder if that is available to be placed on screen tonight. But we want everyone to, to sign an e-decision card tonight. And remember, your only protection is, is repentance and or, or baptism. Tonight, repentance, baptism. That's the only coverage we have tonight. Repentance, baptism. The Bible says in Mark 16, verse 16, believe and be baptized and you shall be saved. You shall be saved. So, so, so tonight, if, if you have not yet been baptized, not yet given your heart to Jesus Christ, I, I want you to get a copy of that e-decision card. I, I want you to uh, respond in a chat, whichever means is more comfortable to you. And, and I want you to register your decision to be baptized in the name of Jesus so you can be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Covered with his love. And with his blood. Tonight you may have already been baptized, but you may have wandered far away from God. You may have allowed God to slip. This pandemic may have caused you to 
lose faith, lose hope, but it's time to come back into that covenant relationship with God. And I ask you tonight in the name of Jesus, just, just say, Lord, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. That, that's all. That's all. God, God will see those decisions tonight. Register them in the chat, YouTube, Zoom, wherever you are. I'm coming home. Or I want to be baptized. I'm praying for the, that this, those decisions tonight. I'm going to pray and release you so that you can go to your bed. And I pray you will have a fantastic Tuesday in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? I, I wish I could touch you all. I wish I could touch you all in the name of Jesus. You're my family and I love you and I want you to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to make it to the other side in the name of Jesus. Let, let us pray right where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the reminder tonight that uh, after death, there is no more probation. There are no more second chances after we die. I, I, I pray, Father, that tonight somebody would have been moved and motivated to make their calling and election sure. I pray, Lord, uh, for some young man, young lady uh, who heard this service tonight live or who may have watched the rebroadcast at a later date. I pray tonight that they would have been moved after this service to make a decision to be baptized or just to repent and, and, and give up that, that those besetting sin, uh, that issue they, that may be holding them back from uh, making a total surrender to God. Please, Father, motivate somebody, move somebody, because the truth is almighty God. We want our names to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, Father, we saw in the parable that the rich man was not named, but the poor man, his name was written down. His name is Lazarus, Father. And, and, and it goes to show, Father God, that when we surrender to you, our names will be written down in the Lamb's book of life. So I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here in this broadcast will be saved. But I pray, Father, that we will make that decision now. We will just allow you to do what you really want to do for us, and that is to cover us with your salvation. Lord, I pray for those who are not yet baptized. I pray, Father, that at the end of this week, Father, in the name of Jesus, at the end of this week, they will register their decision to go with you in baptism. No more delay because it is clear, Father, that we're living in a grand and awful time and Jesus is about to come. So tonight, Father, as I close, I pray for my brother who is coming tomorrow. Dr. Fraser, Father, I hand baton over to him. And Lord, I pray that whatever I fail to accomplish, I pray, Father, upon the, the authority of your word, that you will use him tomorrow night in the name of Jesus, just to help somebody to make that decision. Prepare our hearts for what is to come. This we do pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say amen and amen. God bless you, kingdom family. And I will see you by the grace of God on Wednesday night in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen, Dr. Gregory Carroll. The church would, would want to give a resounding amen if you could only hear us now. Uh, the way you've allowed God to use you um, to give to us, to remind us of, of his word. Thank you for reminding us of the, of the way um, in the places that we're going to, we shouldn't be a victim of, of, of friendly fire, but for the choice that we can make. And we want to thank you, Dr. Carroll, for availing yourself for the Holy Spirit to use you to bless us, his people. Brethren, uh, you've heard already um, that Dr. Fraser will be with us tomorrow night. Uh, please um, put it in your diary, on uh, your phone, 7.30. We're going to start again tomorrow night um, with our Pathway to Peace Revive a crusade. I pray you're being touched every night by the messages from God and by his man servant. So be tomorrow night, 7.30. Uh, Dr. Fraser will be with us. We're going to just uh, close out tonight with our theme song. And brother, have a good night and may God bless you.
Every time I face the waves I don't want to be afraid I don't want to be afraid I don't want to fear the storm Just because I hear it roar I don't want to fear the storm I don't want to fear the storm Believe, let faith rise up in me. 